Hello YouTube. So today I thought I would share with you my HK copy gun, the Sentry C93 Sporter, which was readily available about 10 years back. Um, nowadays they're getting a little harder to find. They're not being produced anymore by Sentry. These were chambered in 5.56 millimeter. Think of the Sentry C93 or HK33 variant as kind of a little brother that was developed in the 1960s to the G3. So essentially it is a scaled down G3 that is in 5.56 millimeter. Kind of like the HK MP5 which is also a scaled down G3 uh, variant. So anyways we'll get into this rifle a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to share this with you today because I think these are pretty cool for the money especially when they were available the first time around they were you know five to seven hundred dollars which in my opinion is a bargain or was a bargain today they're hovering around a thousand dollars maybe a little bit more depending on who has one on the secondary market so if you can get one of these i would definitely encourage you to get one i've shot several hundred rounds through this rifle over the years it's been reliable every time i pull the trigger it's pretty accurate and the nice thing about these c93s is they're very comfortable to shoot. There's, they're, they have almost no recoil, even less than an AR-15. These do weigh more, and they, they do use a different type of system to power the rifle's action. So as the AR-15 is direct impingement, this is a delayed roller blowback system, which uses the power of the gas pushing back the case to unlock the bolt, uh, with a locking piece, there's two rollers, a bolt head, a locking piece, creates a small delay, enough for the gas pressure to go down in the chamber, send the bullet away, then to open the action and cycle everything back over again. So if you want to learn more on delayed roller blowback firearms, simply look that up. But um, it works very well. It's a very reliable system. The only downfall, uh, in my opinion, of the delayed roller blowback system is that it's a little bit dirty. Okay, so it kind of creates a little bit of, you get all that uh, action gas and all the burnt powder in that, uh, in that breech chamber area. So you got to kind of keep that clean, keep it lubed up. Uh, as far as the C93 goes, these were built off of imported surplus kits. Some people said they came in from Malaysia and Thailand. So those would have been HK-33 rifles that were originally built for those militaries. The uh, HK-33 was also used, uh, as far as I've read, by German police units. Uh, also used in some South American militaries. It was actually produced as the T-223 by Harrington and Richardson at one point. It was basically going to try to compete with uh, the M-16, uh, but that never really happened. So anyhow, it's, it's kind of got a long history. The gun was developed in the 1960s, rather late 1960s. But however, it's, uh, even though with its not being 100% maybe successful uh, as its uh, older sibling, the G3, the HK33 platform is very reliable. It's very accurate. And it is a cool looking rifle. So if you're into the HK look and you want to buy a rifle that is a little more affor affordable than something with that HK name, if you can find one of these HK33s out in the wild, definitely would pick it up. Um, these are, of course, semi-automatic. Uh, they have a mixture of American and imported parts in them. So you've got your American receiver from Sentry Arms, American barrel here, and a mix of foreign parts uh, from the original rifle. So this is an American trigger grip, if you will, a trigger housing with a grip. Um, this magazine is original. This is an aluminum 40 round magazine. These are actually kind of hard to get these days. So that's an aluminum magazine made by uh, one of the HK contractors back in the old days, probably 1970s or even 60s. You can buy the HK marked magazines. This is a 25 round magazine. You can also get a 20 round aluminum. This is a 25 round steel. You can get 30 round steel. So they're, uh, you know, these are still readily available as far as the HK produced magazines. 
Now some of your contractor aluminum mags are not produced anymore. So these are kind of hard to get. These HK original magazines are going to run you about $80 a piece. I do believe Pro Mag makes magazines for these HK33 variants and they are like $20 a piece. There is a Turkish translucent uh, polymer mag, if you will, from MKE and those are pretty expensive these days and I've actually tried the Turkish mag and it didn't really fit very well with uh, the, in the C93 so I would advise against using that magazine. Um, definitely don't don't buy those unless you're just trying to collect them or something or you have a different build or a say original HK gun. So anyhow this gun's been very reliable. Uh, there were a couple little issues when I bought it. Uh, the bolt gap and that's that's a whole you know story unto itself it was uh, just a hair of where i didn't want it to be so i went ahead and put different rollers in it and got the bolt gap into the optimal area um, but however it ran fine with the bolt gap uh, kind of being a little bit out of specification uh, the site that it came with the original surplus site was more or less broken the mechanical part of it could not adjust the site so i went ahead and got a basically a, a new surplus site so that's a new drum back there new housing and that fixed that but uh, for the price I paid for this back in the day I'm very uh, very happy that I got it for what I got it at so it's basically tripled in value um, and it's a lot of fun to shoot this has the original uh, wide forearm for the HK 33 and if you notice sorry I will lift that up there you see there's like a little track there and that's where the HK bipod would go so if you find a bipod for it you can install that it's kind of plain there on the receiver get your uh, pin to hold the uh, the rear of the gun together it does not have the pin up front it has the shelf to mount the trigger housing I'm going to flip the rifle over, get these mags out of the way, and as you can see, here's the other side. This housing's got safe and fire. Very easy to work those controls. If you notice, it's got the signature HK trigger and shape to the trigger housing. This large trigger housing would allow for somebody with gloves in the winter time to get their finger in there to pull the trigger. So it didn't need a different uh, winter trigger housing. And you can also see that it has the original carry handle that they've installed from Century. So this came in with the surplus kits and they went ahead and installed it, which I think is really cool. Actually makes it very handy. You can carry that around if you wanted to. Um, but it kind of lends to the legitimacy of the kit build. And I think this barrel is 16 and a quarter inches long. It's got your slotted flash hider there up front your diopter sight as you can see it's kind of a cool uh, looking throwback you know it kind of reminds me of the uh, 1980s uh, Die Hard movie of course they were using nine millimeters in that this got the original I went ahead and bought an original uh, surplus leather sling Mounted right up, no problem. It's kind of like a leather belt, really. It's got the sling loop up front there. It's really pretty easy to set up, and they work. So these are uh, these uh, American. The American barrel on this rifle is has a twist rate of one in nine, so one twist in in nine inches. Uh, as far as weight goes. Definitely heavier than your, your AR-15. I would guess that this is around uh, almost nine pounds. Very solid rifle, very low recoil from this rifle. It's very, uh, very comfortable to shoot. It's not the most ergonomic as far as controls go. However, um, as far as holding the rifle and shooting it or bench shooting it, it is very, very comfortable to shoot. They are uh, very user friendly in that sense. So the trigger pull is is a little bit on the heavy side, however, um, you know it's made up for with the comfort in shooting. So if you get one of these, like I said, they'll be a favorite the favorite to shoot, and uh, you'll probably get a lot of looks for people wanting to shoot your rifle. Um, anyhow, I think Century hit it out of the park with these rifles. I applaud them for that. I applaud them for importing parts kits um, and then assembling them 
for us here or having somebody uh, a manufacturer assemble them and sell them so this is a good one if you can get a century c93 i definitely encourage you to do that oh um and i did forget to mention these do have the uh the century barrels do have the fluted chamber so the fluted chambers were put in on all the hk rifles the g3 the hk33 your uh, mp5 to aid with extraction so it's kind of like these little lines that are uh, parallel inside of the chamber of the barrel to aid with extraction so the century barrels do have those so that's that's a nice touch to authenticity and it aids in the reliability of the gun itself so anyhow i hope you enjoyed the video i enjoyed sharing this with you sharing this rifle with you today and uh please like and subscribe and i'll keep making videos uh about rifles anyhow thanks see you